topics, we can improve our ability to think and speak under pressure. But did you know that the right question asked at the right time to the right person has the ability to send someone halfway around the world in their quest for the answer? In this eight to 10 minute after dinner speech, Lyndon will show you how one simple question did that. The objectives of his speech are to prepare an entertaining after dinner talk on a specific theme and deliver the talk using the skills developed in preceding projects. His speech is titled, Is It Better to Give or Receive? Lyndon Jones. <laughs> Toastmaster. Two days before Christmas, I was here in this room and I got a question from Sherry on Table Topics. Lyndon, is it better to give or receive? As I answered that question, I talked about my first Christmas alone after my divorce and the one present that I had to open. When I sat down, after giving that answer, I felt like I was drowning. And not just from the tears that were coming from my eyes. That question hit me so hard, it felt like it was a tornado launched from a nuclear submarine, captained by John Kuchan. <laughs> <laughs> As I left Toastmasters that day, I was driving, driving out, and I pondered that question, is it better to give or receive? And I started thinking of all of the things that I had given over my life, especially what I experienced the last couple of days as I battled with my ex-wife to try and see my children on Christmas, even explaining to her this would be the third Christmas in a row that I have not been able to see my children. I got nothing in return. I pondered so many things and was feeling, I give, and nobody appreciates it. It was right then the words came into my mind. Lyndon, now you know how I feel. And my, shock, my thought shifted to myself. Of all of the things that I've been given, and how little gratitude I show sometimes, I started thinking about Christmas in two days. About all that Christ has given for all of us, and how little he asks in return, and how little he gets. As I crested part of this canyon, I thought, what am I going to do this Christmas? I'm going to Bethlehem. I'm going to go learn about Christ and show my appreciation. A few hours later, I was on an airplane to Tel Aviv. When I got into Amsterdam, things I found out. One, the cell phone that I had just bought earlier that day and the plan to work over in Israel didn't work. I was without GPS, internet, or phone. <laughs> Two, you don't just go to Israel. <laughs> <laughs> As I approached the jetway, I seen one, two, three barriers I had to go to. The first one was an interview. And as the lady said, when did you buy your plane ticket? And I told her, just a few hours before I voted. <laughs> she looked at me, well, where are you going? Bethlehem, well, where are you staying? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I don't know. Who are you going to see? Uh, nobody. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> As I spent what seemed like the next five hours explaining to her about all of the emotions that I had gone through <laughs> to get me to that point, she was finally saying, just keep talking. I need to tell this to my supervisor so he will give you the 
paperwork you're doing good, you're doing good. <laughs> and the emotion was coming. And the line was long. <laughs> <laughs> when she came back from her supervisor with my paperwork, she said, Lyndon, when you get to Tel Aviv, go to the information desk. They can help you. They can help you with transportation. They can help you with lodging. When I got to Tel Aviv, I did go to the information desk, and they did help me. They told me just what I had looked look before my phone quit working. Bethlehem's just a short distance from the airport. Everything that I need to do is within walking distance. Wrong! <laughs> I would find out when I got back to the States later that there's like two Bethlehems, and when you Google search the one, you get the one that's close. But in reality, the one I wanted to go to is an hour and a half away. So when I was on the taxi, shared taxi ride, that was a whole, getting on that bus was a whole experience in itself. It's not like what I would expect that everybody speaking English, no. But when I got on that bus and they started driving out of town, away from the lights, and it got dark, and I'm 20 minutes into the ride and there is nothing, I'm like, oh shit, I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the map says I'm just supposed to be right here where am I headed and I'll be darned I was nervous I was so nervous I thought I'll just get off at the first hotel guess what there are no hotels on that stop and after we had dropped people off in the middle of nowhere on street <laughs> corners nowhere that I would ever think about getting off the bus driver pulls up and says this is your stop I get out, and he says, at the top of those stairs, there's four or five hotels, and I'm full, filled with emotion. I'm at the walls of old Jerusalem, and I recognize that from the pictures that I've seen over a lifetime. I start walking up these stairs, and I'm thinking, this is so uncomfortable. I get into Jerusalem, there's nothing there. There's nobody in the streets. It's not lit. There's no hotels. The only thing that I see is a pile of freshly made bread right in the middle of the road. <laughs> As I'm dragging my suitcase over Palestine, I'm thinking, this is only making me look so obviously unprepared, and I'm going to get kidnapped. <laughs> and I'm wandering around, wandering around the streets, click, 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 and no, nothing's open. I go to talk to people, but they don't talk to me. I'm getting nervous. It's cold. I've been up. It's now Christmas morning at 4 a.m. And I've been up since Tuesday. Christmas is Thursday. I've been up since Tuesday. And I came to Toastmasters. I finally get somebody to stop and tells me, oh, there's a hotel. You just go down this alley. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I go down the alley, and sure enough, there's a hotel there. I, <laughs> I don't, the door doesn't open, but there's a buzzer, and I push the buzzer, and it's like, oh, my gosh, is this a prison? <laughs> Click. And I pull the door, and I walk in. Nobody. I go in. There's a pair of stairs that goes upstairs. I walk up the stairs. There's a man. That, uh, that had come out from somewhere, and I asked, can I get a room? Guess what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> there is no rooms available. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, great. I asked him what my options are, and he tells me, you know, if you'll come back here at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, there's a chance that somebody might cancel, and we'll see what we can do. I said, can I please leave my luggage here? And he allows me to do that. When I walked out into the street, I'm thinking this was such a bad idea. I am alone. I'm cold. I'm tired. I'm scared. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And as I walk, and I'm feeling all these emotions, I'm thinking this is the worst experience of my life. And it dawns on me.
There's no way to create the experience of having it. You couldn't create it, you couldn't recreate it. At that moment, my whole point of view shifted. And over the next four days, that experience was repeated over and over and over. better to give or receive? When we give, we will get back way more, way more in blessings and gifts. Whether we see it in the short term or in the long run, or whether we never see it at all in this life.